Hey everybody, Chris Grandy. This is going to be my last, say, spring, early summer market update. I'm going to give these a break for a while. Uh, the purpose of, of me doing these updates was just to kind of have you hear from me a little more frequently as the financial world fell through the floor due to the coronavirus. So let me just recap where we've been, and then let's uh, we'll look at the screen and give you a quick just what I'm looking at, okay? So, um, first off, remember back here when we first approached this back in March, we said we had this little range here. And I said, well, if the market gets goes below this range, we could have some serious trouble. If it gets above this range, we could start moving up. And, well, looks like we started uh, moving up. And since then, we've kind of created another little kind of consolidation area. That's what we call these areas where the price just kind of bounces up and down a little bit. You know, this is a consolidation. This is a consolidation. And it moved up again. And now I think we have another one here. You notice that each consolidation kind of creates the floor for the one previous to it, or the roof, depending on if you're going up or down. But here we have here, and I mentioned in my last video on June 8th that, that um, I kind of thought this would be a weak point. We had the market kind of crash through what I called the Tina stop which was a, just a conversation I had had with one of my clients, Tina, and we were just talking about things. So I called this the Tina stop because I had talked to her that day about it and uh, then had some fun with it on the video. I said, well, we broke through that, so I got more cautious and ended up trimming off some, some uh, a little bit of the positions. But then we reversed hard and we got all excited again. And so I think what we have here is we do have another legitimate range. Consolidation, what does that mean? It just means that we could, you know, we could move up here and blast right through it, or we could stay in this choppy range until the election, for example. Or if some kind of bad news came, maybe we would drop below. But I do feel that I think with all the reopenings, even with the virus cases uh, moving up in some states, I really don't think they're going to get that cat back in the bag, and I don't think they're going to close down the economy again 100%. So a lot of these stocks that kind of really got drilled, you know, because they were just never going to reopen or they were going to go out of business, are starting to get some life. So you have a whole part of the a good chunk, a good probably, I can't tell you, at least 50% of the stocks in the market are, are, are horribly performing right now. And a lot of the performance you see in the, in, the, in the index in the market has come from 15, 20 companies. So a lot of companies are still way down in the dumps. And so if they start rising up, we could get a pretty strong stock market. So I think we're back in a range here and and I do think that if we get above here, we, we probably could move significantly higher. I don't know. If we get below here, all bets are off. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to you know, play this, that the way I'm approaching this. And again, talked about this in past articles and videos, like way in the past for a long time. But the market has become very, the economy has become very financialized and the market has become very politicized. So... You know, I'm not looking necessarily at fundamentals and how things are going with co how companies are doing. I'm really looking at how much the government wants to stimulate. And I do think that both presidential candidates will go into uh, uh, go into the fall talking about how much money they're going to spend on infrastructure and such. So, you know, in the past, in other countries it's, and in all around the world, that's been very bullish for stocks. If you've got a lot of debt in the country, it could be really bad for interest rates and for the debt and for bonds. But stocks usually, you know, go up. So, in those situations of, of higher inflation, so if they're going to spend all this money and debase the currency and issue a lot of debt, that could be very bullish for the stock market. So, you know, if I had a guess, I would say maybe we go range bound. It looks like we're trying to get very strongly back up to this level, but I feel like we'll we'll get right into some resistance here. But who cares what I think? Really, what's going to happen is what's going to happen. So the way I'm playing this is, if we got above this range, I would probably add some more to a trading position and increase stock exposure for the momentum purposes. If we go down here, I'd expect our bonds and gold to do well because I feel like if the market were to get weaker, then the talking heads will come out and say they're going to print more money and debase the currency and stimulate more and issue more debt, which is all a bullish long term for gold. Uh, so. And in short term, probably bullish for bonds because they're going to lower interest rate, maybe not long term bullish. So I feel like we're already kind of protected on the downside. But the upside here, we'd probably increase positions as this went. So that's just where we are right now. We had this consolidation down here, moved up. One here, moved up. Now we got another one here. And it's also getting close to the you know, all time high in the S&P 500, which is here. So you know, a move up here would approach those 
all time highs and maybe do something. So again, what I want you to take from this is that is that the economy has become very financialized and the market is very politicized. So if the politics are running the markets and the market's running the economy, you can see where, you know, maybe it's not necessarily so important to, uh, you know, how well exactly a company is doing. What's more important is are we reopening? Is the feeling good? I mean, this is this is sad, but is the feeling good because a lot of this stuff is momentum based and trend based? Is the feeling going great? How are we all doing? And if you get that kind of good feeling, you're going to have the markets go up. And it's it's sad to say that, you know, and obviously we're, we're trying to get exposure to things that we know would do well in, in inflationary times. We have commodity exposure. We have gold exposure. Uh, we have inflation protected bond exposure. We have tech stock exposure. We have medical tech stock exposure. We have stuff that, you know, can do well in, in an inflationary market. Um, you know, we don't own things like utilities. We don't really own... Uh, real estate uh, so you know it's just you know we're, we're kind of leaning towards the inflation side of things but you know this could go anyway but just know that so these levels here just for those of you keeping score at home this is 32 38 roughly in the S&P 500 on the top and roughly 29 eh, 29 call it 29 25 on the bottom so when you watch the news at night and it says the S&P 500 index is at if you see it go above 3250, 3300, you know we're moving, we're making a move higher. If you see it drop below 2900, maybe bad things are happening. All right, so we, we could do this also for the other indices, but I mean the Nasdaq has kind of run away, so it's it's a little more difficult to do it with them because that's where all the action's been in the market. You know, it's all been in the Nasdaq. See, they're already at all-time highs. Uh, the Dow has been kind of slow, so the Dow has been kind of underperforming. So you have, you know, it almost looks like a weak trend here in the Dow. The Dow typically has companies that are a little bit more, you know, old world. The Nasdaq has all the software companies, et cetera, and Amazon and everything else that's flying. So um, just keep that in mind. All right. So hope you guys have a great day. This has been my last kind of general market update. Watch those levels, you know, 3230 on the upside, 2925 on the downside on the S&P. And remember, um, you know, the economy is financialized, the market is politicized, politics runs the economy, Pol politics runs the market, which runs the economy, so everything else doesn't seem to matter right now. Okay guys, talk to you soon, hope this was helpful to you. I'll talk to you later.